Hello, thank you for watching this video. So in this video, I'll be doing question 8 of November 2020 question paper, physical science paper 1. So I'll read the statement like I always do. I'll show the question paper so you can read for yourself. And my diagram is not nice at all. You know, I can't draw. Even seconds, I can't draw them. But I'm sure you can see here from the question paper that I've displayed so that you cannot be complaining about my drawing. So I'll start reading the statement and answer the questions that follow. Question 8. A battery with an internal resistance of 0,5 ohms and an unknown electromotive force is connected to three resistors, a high resistance voltmeter and an ammeter of negligible resistance, as shown in the second diagram below. The resistance of the connecting wires must be ignored. I'll read the, question, the statement again. A battery with an internal resistance of 0,5 ohms and an unknown electromotive force is connected to three resistors, a high resistance ammeter, voltmeter and an ammeter of negligible resistance as shown in the second diagram below. The resistance of the connecting wires must be ignored. So what this statement is telling us is what we can see here. So we have this battery of unknown electromotive force uh, that have the internal resistance of 0,5 ohms with three resistors that are connected to it and uh, this um, and this voltmeter, high resistance voltmeter connected across it. So what they are telling us is basically what you can see here. Question number one, 8.1. Define the term EMF of a battery. So what is the electromotive force of a battery? So an electromotive force, it is the work done by the battery to move one column of charge across the circuit. That's what an electromotive force is. So an electromotive force, it is the work done by the battery, right? To move a unit column of charge across the circuit. That's what an electromotive force is. I'll write it down so that you can also uh, see it. Or if you can hear me and you clearly hear what I'm saying, then we're good. So let me write it down. So an electromotive force is the work done by the battery to move a unit column of charge across the circuit. So it's the work done by the battery to move a unit column of charge across the circuit. That's it. That's the electromotive force. Let's continue. The reading on the voltmeter decreases by 1.2 volts when the switch is closed. So when this switch here is closed, the reading on the voltmeter, which is across the battery, decreases by 1.5 volts. So they are not saying our voltmeter is measuring 1.5 volts but um, when the switch is closed uh, the reading on the voltmeter decreases by 1.5 volts that's what they are saying so let's go to 8.2 give a reason why the voltmeter reading decreases so they want us to explain why the voltmeter reading decreases when the switch is closed so the voltmeter reading decreases because of our internal resistance. So um, those 1.5 volts are converted into heat by our internal resistor. So that 0 0.5 ohm internal resistor consumed that 1.5 volts and is being converted into heat. So uh, the observed decrease is due to um, uh, is, is the observed decrease is consumed by our internal resistor, which con which is converted to heat. That's why we observe a decrease in um, in potential difference across our battery. Let's go to the next question. Eight point three. Calculate the following when the switch is closed. So now they are saying our switch is now closed. So you must calculate the following. 8.3.1 8.3.1 Calculate the reading on the ammeter. 
They want us to calculate the reading on the ammeter. Oh, okay. In case you want me to write down 8.2. That's it. So 8.3.1. They want us, they say calculate the reading on the ammeter. So they want you to calculate the reading on the ammeter. They want you to calculate the reading on the ammeter. What does the ammeter measure? It measures the current, right? What do we have? We know that we lost 1.5 volts on our internal resistor. So this 0 0.5 ohm internal resistor consumes 0 0.5 volts. So we can calculate the current there, which is the same as here. That's what we can do. Because the current on this internal resistance resistor is the same as the current here. So if we know the current at the internal resistor, we know the current here on our ammeter. So we use our Coulomb's law. We say, okay, V is equal to IR. So we know V lost is 0, 1.5 which is equal to I R. Our R is 0 0.5 ohms. Then you divide by 0 0.5, you divide by 0 0.5. So you punch this on your calculator, and your calculator will tell you that your internal your current is 3 amps. Then you are done with this. Go to 8.3.2. How does 8.3.2 reads like? Eight point three point two. Calculate the total external resistance of the circuit. They want us to calculate the total external resistance of the circuit. What is the total external resistance of the circuit? So they are asking you, what, like like the word says, what is the external total external resistance? So we have R one, we have R two, we have R three. When you are adding this up. What are they adding up to? That's what they are asking you. So they want you to calculate our external total. You have your internal, so they want your external outside the battery. Your internal is inside the battery. External resistance, uh, you will find you will be able to calculate using the resistors that are outside the battery. Okay. So now to do this, you say okay, to do to find a total resistance. For series, if you are working with series, you say, okay, your R, uh, R total is equal to R1 plus R2 plus whatever resistors that are in series. But now, if you're working with a combination of series and parallel, you must first resolve the parallel combinations first. And then you can proceed to go to the series part, right? So you must first solve this parallel combination of resistors, and then you, you can go on to the series afterwards. So now, to do this, we must first find the total resistance of the parallel combination. Once we have it, this will look at this as one resistor of the total that we will get. Once we do that, we will have two resistors R1 and R parallel total, which will be in series connection. Then we will be able to add them like that. We will be able to add them like that. So now let's first resolve the parallel combination first. How do we do this? We say, okay. So, 1 over R parallel is equal to 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So 1 over R parallel is equal to 1 over 25 plus 1 over 15, which is equal to, then you add this and punch this on your calculator, 1 over 25 plus 1 over 15 which is equal to 8 over 75. We cross multiply this times that and this times this. 
So we have r parallel 8, r parallel is equal to 75. Cross multiply this, which means you divide by 8, divide by 8, your r parallel is equal to 75 divided by 8, which is 9,38 ohms. So this is the total resistance of the parallel combination. So now, in other words, we can come to our original point and say, we know that the total of this area here is 9,38 ohms. This is what we just worked out. So we can look at this as one resistor of 9,38 ohms. That's what we do. So now we want the total external resistance. So now we'll just add this one and this one because they are in series connection. So to find the total, it will be R1 plus that R parallel total. And then you get your total resistance of your, sequ your sequence. So you don't just say R1 plus R2 plus R3. You must first work out your parallel combination total. Once you have it and all your resistors are in series connection to each other, then you can start adding them. So now, what we do, we say, okay, to get our total resistance, total external resistance, is going to be R external is equal to R1 plus R parallel. So, how does this look like? We say, okay, this is going to be equal to R1, which is 4 ohms, plus 9,38, which is equal to 13,38 uh, ohms. So you are done with 8.3.2. Then you go to 8.3.3. How does it read like? Calculate the EMF of a battery. So the EMF of a battery, you know that EMF is equal to I into the sum of ex uh, uh, external resistance plus internal resistance. Right? So your EMF is equal to I, you know your I, which is your current, is equal to 3 times your external resistance of 13,38 plus 0 0,5 ohms, which is equal to, punch this in a calculator, uh, 3 times 13,38 plus 0 0,5. This is 41,64 volts. So EMF is equal to 41,64 volts. So this was the reading of our voltmeter when the switch was open. And then it did lost 1,5 volts. Uh, you can subtract here and know to find out what the reading was after the switch was closed, but there's no need for that. So, 8.4. Let's go to our diagram again. 8.4, read as follows. Elena makes the following statement. The current through R3 is larger than the current through R2. So the student is saying the current through R3 is larger than the current through R2. Is the student. So... Is this statement correct? Choose yes or no. So, I'll say the answer is yes, the student is correct. Why? Because you know that the current is inversely proportional. Uh, the current is inversely proportional to the resistance, right? So, you know that from column that uh, uh, current is inversely proportional to your resistance. So since these two, these resistors are in parallel connection, the potential difference is the same 
across them. So V is the same, which is if you say I is equal to V over R, right? So you know that V is, the, is constant across that parallel combination, it's the same. But the current across each is different. Because you can say, okay, you have your current flowing in this direction here. So when your current gets here, it behaves more like water. It will split here and split to that side. When you add this split on the side and split on the other side, it will give you your original current. That's what happens. So now, if you're saying V is the same across, across uh, um, these resistors, if you're saying the, the uh, potential difference is the same across these resistors, that means I is different. So the larger, since you know that your current is inversely proportional to the resistance, the larger the resistor, the smaller the current. The smaller the current, the larger the, uh, the resistor. Which means R3 is smaller than R2. Therefore, it will have a larger current because the current is inversely proportional to the resistance. In this case, with our V being the same as whatever these things will be registering. So the student is correct. 8.5. The 4 ohm resistor is now removed. So this resistor here is now removed. How will this affect the electromotive force of the battery? Choose increases, decreases, or remain the same. So removing a, a resistor will not change the nature of our battery. So the resistance, the electromotive force of the battery will remain the same. It will not change. This is how you do this question. I hope I well thank you for watching